special guest. I just want to make you aware of a couple of events that we have going on here sponsored by Student Government. On Tuesday, the Frozen February Blues concert will take place, and that will start at 12.30 p.m. and also at 7.30 p.m. right here in the Arts and Media Theater. On Wednesday at 12 noon, there will be a improvisational and interactive comedy tour called Sex Signals. They explore issues in relationships and problems that can arise when misinterpretation happens during a relationship. And on Thursday, Upstate New York Transplant Services will hold a blood drive at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Buffalo Sabre forward Jason Powell will be in attendance and will be signing autographs. We want to encourage everyone to participate in all of these events uh, as your student fee is covering all those. Today at C Student Government is proud to present Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Please note that a question and answer session will be held afterwards in G117 where uh, a large amount of Dr. Dyson's books will be available to be purchased. Michael Eric Dyson is one of our nation's most inspiring and influential speakers. He is a vocal representative of a new generation of public intellect intellectuals whose writings and opinions provide a fresh outlook on culture and racial issues. Whether talking about structural social issues in his book, Come Hell or High Water, Hurricane Katrina and the Color of Disaster, or his books with looking to the lives of the major civil rights leaders of our time, Dr. Dyson's insights are sure to pro provoke thought, debate, and ultimately a better understanding. A renowned scholar with a PhD from Princeton University and an ordained Baptist minister, he is not only a highly published writer, but is regularly seen and heard on news and commentary programs. He is currently a professor, professor of social at Georgetown University. Without further delay, Niagara County Community College would like to welcome Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. difference, whether it's gender, um, and whether it's other able versus the so-called uh, able community, whether it's dealing with region or geography, um, ethnicity or immigrant versus so-called indigenous and native uh, peoples, although that has different resonance, especially in this area. Um, so I wanted to talk about the differences those differences make. And to speak openly and honestly about that, uh, the Reverend Marcia Dyson is with me here today, and she is equally capable of uh, engaging in serious and sustained dialogue. So when we have the q and A, I'm going to maybe have a chair up here. She can sit up here with me, and we can uh, get two for the price of one. Ah, that's, uh, <laughs> we were just bowling, and I embarrassed her with my tremendous skill. <laughs> okay, she was in high heels and threw a strike. But, uh, and I threw some gutter balls. But I was just trying to let her win until later when I just show her my Earl Anthony kind of skills there. Um, but one of the things that is important to speak about differences that a lot of us just don't want to deal with it. We want to pretend that everything is the same, we're all the same, and we are all the same, ultimately. I was speaking with Brother Tony on the way down, and he was talking about one of his favorite 
kind of metaphors for similarity that when you prick your fingers and let the blood flow on the ground, we're all the same. And boy, if we could all get to that, wouldn't we be a much better community? Because we're bleeding the same blood, we're living in the same world, and we're breathing the same air. And yet people have erected differences based upon, and social hierarchy, based upon the inessential differences of identity. Whether you're black or white or red or brown or yellow, whether you come from a certain part of the country or not, whether you have access to capital or not, we're having these debates in this country about health care right now. Give us the same kind of health care you got in Congress, and we're good. Yeah. Right? We're good. How you gonna be deciding somebody's health care and you good? And you tell the folk who ain't got none, they all right. Give us what you got. Let me show you what we working with. Show us what you working with. Let's all do it together. And so, you know, I have so many people that come to me, you know, I don't even see your color. Really? That's just hard to miss. I don't know. I get what you're saying. You're saying that you don't want to use my color against me. That I can appreciate, but don't act like you don't see me. Amen. I know you don't mean any harm by it. John Mayer sees the difference. Uh. And it's interesting to me that John Mayer gets off kind of because he's trying to be cool. Really? How about a cool white guy can still be a racist? Uh. That might be one point to make. Mm. That a cool guy who thinks who has a lot of black fans ultimately may disrespect them because we're trying to infantilize grown white men. You can't infantilize a grown white guy. You've been CEOs of major corporations, most of them, ran the country, 43 of the 44 presidents been white men. But you don't know not to say the word nigga about black people. That's not true. You just don't want to know it. Same way that we would say to black people who go to churches where there's deep homophobia in San Diego. Now you're gonna turn around and you've been a victim of racism and extend homophobia. Mm. You don't see no difference, right? You see, well, I'm black and I choose it, they choose to be lesbian or gay. Really? So when did you choose to be heterosexual? Uh. Seven years old, you wrote up on your mama love. <laughs> <laughs> I've been mulling this thing over, you know? I'm gonna holler at the ladies, that's, that's my choice. <laughs> And uh, I need a car and a bank account, okay, <laughs> by the time I'm 18, so I can roll and stuff. That's not how it works, really. Unconscious integration of presuppositions in a dominant culture in a heterosexual society. Ain't nobody chose to be anything. And the people who don't want to be gay end up being gay themselves. The, the gay folk don't often, because of homophobia, they internalize, they internalize sexism and they internalize homophobia themselves, and some of the people who hate gay people most are gay themselves. <laughs> Just like some folks who hate blackness are black themselves, right? So we live in a culture where difference is not well tolerated, where we don't even want to accommodate something that challenges the mainstream of our thought. We live in a country, and I mentioned the John Mayer thing, uh, only because here's a guy who doesn't really get held accountable. Now, we'll, we'll dog Serena and Venus all day long. Like, they're the worst thing since Attila the Hunt. Kanye West has been blackballed, right? He done gave Taylor Swift every award in humanity. And I ain't mad at Taylor Swift. She's a lovely, talented young lady, but I mean, she's about to get the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Because Kanye snatched the microphone. It wasn't good for him to snatch the microphone, but, but at the same time, let's, de let's deal with Let's be politically incorrect here for a minute. There are a lot of people who would have liked to grab microphones when awards that were being given to people who didn't deserve them got them. For instance, I'm sure Chuck Berry would have loved for somebody to grab the microphone when Elvis got his award. Uh. Or Little Richard would have loved to have snatched the microphone from Pat Boone. Because uh. Pat Boone was remaking his songs. Uh. Y'all saw Dream Girls. Uh. I think. <laughs> you know that's the deal. You know folk, we're trying to be politically correct. Well, the thing is that uh, all of us get awards, and sometimes the people who deserve them don't get them, but it's a pattern about who keeps getting the stuff they don't deserve.